Hi there everyone, my name's Luke and welcome to my channel. So I've got both rigs out tonight. Uh, it's, a, it's a lovely clear night and it's set to be clear right through. Um, I definitely didn't want to let this one go to waste. Um, but the main rig we're actually going to be focusing on is the little portable rig. Um, I finally kind of got to grips with using that now and I feel confident to bring you uh, a little video showing you how I use it on any given night and uh, roughly how things go. So uh, I hope that you'll enjoy that and uh, let's get to it. So I thought we could start first by taking a look at the entire rig right from the ground up. Uh, that might help you to better understand why I've got what I've got and uh, what each part of it does. So literally from the ground up we're using this. It's a uh, it's basically a surveyor's tripod. Um, this was just bought from Tool Station, I believe, at about £45. Pounds. Um, to this, I've affixed a permanently uh, attached tripod spreader. I've yet to cut these bolts off, um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, and to affix that, I hope you can see there, I've just used some small uh, metal brackets. So it's attached to the tripod leg and to the, uh, to the plywood board itself. Um, Moving up a little bit, so you can hopefully see that I've just used an eye bolt here with a uh, an actual matching thread uh, nut a little bit further up the shaft. And all that does is it's a 3 8 inch thread that goes into the bottom of one of these, uh, so that's a 3 8 inch um, bolt. And it can create just enough torque when tightened up that it holds down this um, wedge. Excuse me for <laughs> forgetting where I was there. It holds this wedge down very tightly against this this base plate which is actually meant for a, a laser leveling device um, so moving up a little bit more we've got the actual mount which is an AZ GTI uh, that's a Wi-Fi mount and the, the good thing about this one over perhaps a lot of other star tracking mounts and small mounts is that it's driven in both right ascension and declination um, so to get this to work though uh, it actually comes naturally as a an alt azimuth mount but it actually does work in equatorial mode when you pair it with a wedge and the equatorial firmware, uh, which is very easy to load on. And there's a few good videos already on YouTube describing how to do that. That's, that's all that I used to perform the, uh, the upgrade. Um, now attached to this, if we just get up a moment, there is a uh, small counterweight shaft, which is M12 thread, I do believe. You could actually just use M12 threaded rod if you wanted to go uh, a really cheap option on this uh, and any old small count 08 but this happens to be I think from a, uh, a small Celestron EQ1 class mount uh, and it just happens to fit so that's what came with this I bought this used and that works great I, I do think in the future I'm going to buy a slightly longer count 08 bar because as it currently is this rig is just a little bit top heavy um, but moving on so the next thing we have is basic uh, Skywatcher dovetail because this is a normal clamp that holds uh, Vixen dovetails. I'm sorry about any poor camera work here. It's uh, <laughs> quite difficult filming at night like this um, And to that I've basically drilled uh, a couple of custom holes and kind of screwed and bolted to this uh, photo um, Dovetail rail so it's got one quick release clamp on this side to which I've attached the ASI air We'll talk about that in a moment and also attached to the ASI air is the actual guide scope. So moving around, um, the actual imaging part of the rig is going to be this, which is a Canon 700D. Uh, this has been Astro modified. I think it's the Bada modification. Uh, again, bought used. Um, that's been that's been great, really. It's been nice to go back to having a DSLR after uh, using just dedicated Astro cameras for quite a long while. Um, now I'm very lucky to have this fantastic lens, which is a Samyang. 135 f2 um, I found through experimenting with it that this works absolutely fantastic at f2.8 um, I don't know if you can just see that it's clicked on the aperture stop to f2.8 there but if not just take my word for it that's where it's running um, I have a small um, juice strap to this otherwise it definitely would dew over even with the little hood uh, Inside, I'm using a SV Bonnie UHC filter. Um, I won't be able to show you that just yet, otherwise it means taking the lens off and potentially having to create new flats and such. But again, that was just a cheap purchase from Amazon, and uh, it actually works great for catching these large sun and nebula targets that I'm, I'm actually going to start getting some time on now. Um, 
staying on this side for a moment, um, we just have a go. 3D printed button off mask. I uh, made myself. I happen to have a 3D printer, so that costs nothing. And uh, we'll just see if we can show you that filter down there. No, I guess not. Never mind. Just leave that there a moment. That's that's quite difficult to put on while the lens hood's in place. <laughs> that's one downside to this lens. Um, so, moving on a little bit. So we've got this ASI Air Pro. Um, what this does is it's basically going to act as your imaging computer uh, for the whole night. Everything's going to run through it and actually connecting to this is just a doddle using Wi-Fi and the ASI Air app. You'll notice on the left hand side it's actually got four power outlets but I'm only using three of them. Uh, so this has got three um, cables running with it. It comes with four in the box but I've got powered through this um, this lens warmer, uh, a small one for the finder guider. Sorry about traffic noise if you can hear that. And finally another cable coming all the way around into the AZ GTI. Um, now it's possible to connect up the AZ GTI and the ASI Air wirelessly, but I've chosen to do it with the wire, the Lynx Astro wire, uh, because it enables you then to use the ASI Air in 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi mode, uh, which is quite a lot faster, even though it doesn't go through uh, ob obstacles quite so well. Um, so as you can see there, that's the Lynx Astro cable coming up. It looks kind of a mess, but it is fortunately quite tightly attached, so there's, uh, there's no chance of it coming loose and causing snags. Um, I'll talk you through what's currently attached. So, right here, this cable this is coming around to the ASI 120mm Mini, which is going into a 30mm f4 finder guider. Uh, that's just bought from First Light Optics, I seem to remember, and uh, that's just been fantastic. Great little guiding setup, especially for this sort of image scale. Um, the next thing is this is connected up to the mount. This is the Lynx Astro uh, cable. And finally, we've just got a little cable coming around to the side of the cannon. And uh, that's how that's going to communicate with the ASI Air. So I think that's a reasonable overview, hopefully, for you. And uh, it may not look it, but it is quite well balanced. It's, it's just as I said, maybe ever so slightly scope heavy, so I could do with perhaps another inch or so uh, longer counterweight. But yeah, let's move on. Sorry to keep droning on, but I forgot to add, for the sake of completeness, this entire thing is just powered by one 12 volt uh, 5 amp power supply that runs up here and goes into the back of the ASI Air. Okay, so everything's cooled down. It's uh, very, very roughly aligned uh, with the polar north. So that's basically just been done by sitting behind the scope and putting the north leg pointing towards Polaris just by eye. Um, hopefully you can see on the secondary screen here what I'm going to be doing. Uh, and I'll try and talk you through it as I go. I realise the camera angles are probably not the best, but we're just going to have to make do with what we've got, and hopefully it's still some use to you. Um, so the first thing um, is you're actually going to want to connect up to the Wi-Fi network created by the ASI Air Pro. So right there, ASI Air 15DD1. Connect up to that, and now I'm going to actually tap the ASI Air app. That's going to open up. Uh, I've turned on... The main camera, the 700D, and uh, everything is ready, hopefully, to go there. As you can see, main camera, guide camera, and the mount, they're all detected. Click enter. Okay, it's just informing me that the camera needs to be in raw mode, etc. It's all just kind of common sense stuff, I guess. Um, now, it's going to come on on this page, and the first thing you're going to want to do is tap here where it says preview, and go on to PA, so that's polar align. Um, it's going to tell you roughly what to do, set up the scope as shown, and uh, basically all you need to do is make sure your camera's on and focused for this next step to work, and just hit go. It's going to take a short exposure and solve it, as it's just done now. Plate solved, took three seconds. Tap next, and the RE axis uh, will be around 60 degrees moved for calculating the transformation. I'll tell you how far out of polar alignment you are. So maybe you can hear that now, the mouse is just going to move, it's actually counting down uh, how far it has moved. Once it's completed this, it's going to take a second exposure and uh, we can then begin to patch the polar align and figure out where we are. 
okay so it's done that it's calculated it and then tap let's go so I can see that I need to move it left uh, and down now it's quite a large movement left uh, so I'm actually just going to take the tripod rather than trying to do this on the adjustment screws the azimuth adjustment um, I'm actually going to take the back two legs of the tripod and move them to the right which will move uh, which will point the scope left so that's a small movement click refresh so after each movement you need to click just refresh and it'll, from there it'll transfer it'll calculate the transformation so now we're we're into the, like the uh, the smaller errors I'm actually going to take over now using the uh, the azimuth and altitude adjustment bolts on the on the little skywatcher wedge um, hopefully I'm not blocking the screen there yeah so it's a left movement so from behind the scope it's saying left grab the left bolt and tighten it so to, to tighten that I need to obviously undo the uh, the right hand bolt see where this solves okay more left it's always better to make uh, sh small adjustments with this you can quite easily over egg it and go way too far the opposite direction and just be chasing your tail all night okay it's still left slightly larger movement this time still still small As you can see, it plate solves these, these steps quite rapidly. You definitely don't feel like you're wasting much time getting perfectly polar aligned anyway. Alright, so now the azimuth adjustment's basically done. As you can see, we've got a very small total error there. It's now just the altitude adjustment, and it's saying that it needs to move down. So. This particular wedge doesn't actually like to be adjusted accurately down. It'd sooner be moved up to a position and left there. I, I assume most of these Skywatcher um, wedges are the same. They're made for the um, Star Adventurer, I do believe, is actually where it's for. So I'm going to go and take it down first and then move back upwards. So to move this wedge up, it's actually a counterclockwise movement. Let's see if I've moved far enough. Ideally, I'd, I'd want it to be saying I need to move up. Yes, that's perfect. So up. So I'm going to take the altitude bolt and move it very, very slightly uh, counterclockwise. Hopefully this is not too boring for you. And uh, I just thought it was worth showing basically the, the, the raw edit of how it goes. Again, very small altitude adjustment upwards. Definitely don't want to overshoot this and have to do that step again where I go down first and then move up. So it's very close now. Uh, I'm just going to try and move an extremely small amount up. And there you go. So the total area now is just fading. Uh, it's tiny. Click finish. I'm satisfied with that. It tells you that you did it quite fast if you did it <laughs> fairly rapidly. Uh, when I'm not doing it on camera, obviously, it can be done much faster than this. Um, but now we've done with that, we can click where it says PA again. This is how you basically control your shooting modes that you're using. And um, I'm at now actually going to go to preview mode. You use this for getting plate solved and aligned. Um, now I know that the region of sky I'm wanting to shoot is now visible. It's just in the east northeast there, uh, and I'm actually going to align to Seda. So it's already selected, but I'll just give you a quick overview of this object browser. Hopefully you can see there. It gives you a little pictorial representation of what the target is going to look like. Uh, it's got a great big ca catalog. This is just the tonight's best part. You can select many many things. Um, it's absolutely fantastically full-fledged. I, uh, I was blown away when I first started using this and it was only just the most recent update to the ASIA software that enabled this to, to work in this manner uh, with, you know, with the object browser. But since I know what I'm actually wanting, uh, I'm going to select 
I guess I've almost typed it there. I'll have to finish that, say there. You can go to named stars and such. Um, how embarrassing. There we go, say there. So, if we tip that and then press go to, it's now gonna calculate uh, the movement to Seda roughly, including that polar alignment um, adjustment that we made, the 60 degrees on rotated. You don't need to set it back to, uh, to zero before you do this. And it's almost there. And now it's gonna take a shot and uh, calculate its error and get it kind of centered up for you. Should just take a moment now, uncentered. So it's already calculated that it wasn't quite there. Uh, it's just gonna make a correction. Sorry about these pauses. <laughs> There we go, so it's satisfied that it's centered and it's just loading up an image now on screen and it's gonna show us right there in the middle of the screen is Seda. It's quite well focused already, um, but I'm actually gonna, uh, just using the live view on the camera screen, I'm gonna use the little button of mask. Um, this thing here, I'm just gonna pop this on the end and focus on this bright star uh, using the live view like I've just mentioned and get it perfect before I uh, actually start imaging. So I'll just come back to you in just a moment after uh, performing that. So just to kind of show you uh, that it's now focused and hopefully to prove it to myself, <laughs> I'll just take a short preview exposure with the batting of mask still on the end. Just loading that on now. quite cold out here tonight yeah there we go so you can see that the spikes are basically perfectly central and uh, I'm happy that that's sorted so I just tap to get back to the main preview don't forget to remove the bino mask <laughs> uh, wouldn't be the first time I've done that uh, and now since I'm actually on the point of the sky that I want to be on, just say it is good enough, uh, that'll actually catch a, a wide region of nebulosity. Uh, I was shooting it last night and capturing a little bit of time on it, and I hope to add to that tonight. Uh, I'm going to use the live stacking feature of the ASI Air Pro tonight, but I am also going to tell it to save every single um, exposure as it goes along, because I'm going to take them then and stack them either in Pixie Insight or Deep Sky Stacker, and uh, then I can make the most uh, rejection stacking algorithms and uh, get rid of any satellite pl uh, trails, plane trails, um, things like that. And um, hopefully end up with a better final image. But using the live stacking in the first place is quite useful because you can get to see the image build uh, kind of in real time throughout the night. So if I just show you this, it actually talks you through how to create uh, flats, biases, darks. Um, I'm not looking at this camera. And uh, I have done that already, and I can I can do a video on that if people really uh, need it. But its explanations are really quite good. So I'm just going to select the uh, the flat. I'm going to select the bias I've already taken. I haven't taken darks. I'm not going to use them with this camera. I'll just tell it to dither instead. Um, so if you notice, well, I've got save every frame when stacking. That's going to take every single frame that comes in and save it individually again for later use. So I can click OK. Next thing to do before I actually get my uh, guiding going is, uh, sorry, before I get the imaging plan going, is get the guiding going, if I get myself sorted. So I'm just gonna start this looping. Select a reasonably bright star. As you can see, it's delivering, uh, hopefully you can see that. Yep, it's showing quite a peaky uh, representation of that star's histogram view, and that's perfect. That's what you want, not, not like, um, if I just demonstrate and select this star, it's going to have a very flat top, if, if indeed I can even select it, yeah. So there you can see it's got kind of a flat top, and it's, it's harder for the software to work out the centroid of a star 
when you don't actually know that only one or two pixels um, when it, it doesn't know that only one or two pixels are actually saturated um, so if you select one that's ever so slightly less bright it'll actually guide better on that star than on a brighter one so I'm going to go ahead and click guide this has remembered my calibration from last time you can view that data there uh, you can also tell it to flip if it hasn't automatically remembered itself but I'm satisfied that that's going to guide away now and if I just hit go it's going to start the first five minute exposure and it's going to keep taking these now automatically dithering automatically stacking and uh, we'll come back to that in a little while and I'll show you it uh, once it's stacked a few frames but I'm going to go inside now and warm up <laughs> Okay, so we're about two hours into this stack now, uh, and hopefully this is apparent for you on the video footage, but um, the data is becoming very smooth now, um, fortunately. Now it's stacked a good few frames. Um, if we just go look at the propeller again, that's showing well. And another target that's showing up quite well that you may recognize, the Crescent Nebula there, just in shot. Um, we'll just take a quick look at how the guiding's going. It's a total error of 1.3 so not too bad at all really I think it will guide better than this when I get a uh, slightly longer counterweight shaft but all the same it's guiding more than good enough for this sort of uh, image scale well guys it's the end of the night now um, I captured 41 five minute exposures tonight um, 24 I think last night so uh, coupled together at f2.8 that's quite a lot of exposure time um, I'm hopeful that it's going to present uh, a nice image at the end and this gradient won't pose too much of a problem in post-processing but if not it's no real matter because uh, that's not really been the point of tonight's video I guess um, it was kind of more important just to show you what it is that I've been using recently and, uh, and indeed learning to use as it's still quite new to me uh, and hopefully to demonstrate why I've been enjoying using it so much it's um, such a user-friendly little interface on here uh, I really have absolutely no complaints. Um, it's one of those things where, I guess until you actually start using it, uh, in, in, let's say in direct comparison to what I'm used to using on the PC, um, when you actually start using this, you can see how everything's so streamlined and user-friendly. It's, um, yeah, you wish more Astro software was this way, basically. <laughs> I, uh, I, I say it a lot, but I really do appreciate your time uh, yeah I hope you've enjoyed this one even if it's been a little bit different to what I've normally been putting out and um, yeah it, especially if you know anything about this that I've not been exploiting uh, leave a comment down below I'll, I'd love to uh, to know if there's anything else that I can be doing to make these sessions even more productive and uh, yeah thank you very much for your time thank you for watching and uh, I hope to see you next time Cliss guys